got your Bibles open in your place uh, to the 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. You're going to have to come over there and click on that thing for me. Hey, there we go. And we're down about verse 7. We've dealt with the idols, okay? And now we're going to deal with taking the Lord's name in vain. Okay? Taking the Lord's name in vain. And in verse 7, uh, it says this. It says, um, Thou shalt not take the Lord's name, but take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think... Uh, this is probably one of the fastest growing acceptable vices in the United States. Uh, I don't know if you've been out to a restaurant lately. Uh, seems to be younger people, but not just younger people. But uh, there are some folks that have conversations. You almost can't take your wife in there. Uh, you know, it's, it's F-bomb this. And, and it just, you know, it's, it's an embarrassment. I like what Adrian Rogers said that that cursing was a, uh, an empty mind trying to express itself forcefully. Uh, and I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it is something that we accept. Uh, it's something that we kind of, I don't know, you kind of, your ears kind of draw up a little bit. But, guess what? We, we just go with it. I told you I made the statement one time in my life that well, you know, if you're going to watch TV, you're just about going to have to listen to that. So, you know, I, it, she has got so disgusted with it, there's a, a family channel or something that's on there. that uh, They play the Waltons and Bonanza. And, and she said, and she, quit, she quit watching the news in the morning. She said, I'm so tired of hearing it. Uh, and, and so when I get up, because she gets up with chickens, you know what I'm saying? When I get up, she's already got, you know, halfway through three episodes of, you know, the Golden Girls or something like that. Because it, we really do live in a day and a time when you cannot turn the idiot box on and not have to deal with the filth. Uh, and it's, it's, it, it's not just here and there. It's everywhere. It's on the broadcast news networks. The, I'm going to say the broadcast network, The ones that put it out free. You know, people say, well, you know, you cut your cable off you don't have to listen to that because... They don't go by the same guidelines that the public tell me. But you can't turn that on anymore without having to listen to the filth and CIB, CS, JK, 2 and 3, and New Orleans. And all. I mean, every time you turn it on, it's like I can't express myself without the filth. <laughs> you know, I've told you on the History Channel that there have been several programs that I really enjoyed. You know what I'm saying? You can't watch them. You can't watch them for, you can't understand what they're saying because it's every other word is beep, 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 beep. You know, I mean, where does that come from? Well, anyway, it's, it's a serious problem, but here's the deal. How many of you have said, uh, oh, well, I'm sorry for the slip of the tongue? Or pardon my French? I don't know about y'all, I don't know French. But I don't think none of them words fit into that. You know what I'm saying? And we do, do we not? Do we not have a tendency to make an excuse for it? Well, I got upset. I got, you know what I'm saying? This is a dangerous thing. Why do you think God takes this so seriously? Anybody? I'm sure he does. Okay, it's degrading. Anybody else? It trivializes his name. Okay. All right, that's very good. Anybody else? Why do you think God takes this so seriously? So much so, you remember, we talked about this is the code of conduct for culture, okay? Why do you think God takes it so seriously? Yes, go ahead. Maybe because it shows that the individual has lost control. Right. That's pretty good. I've never thought about it from that angle before, but you're probably right. Anybody else? There's power in the tongue. What? There's power in the tongue. Okay. Power in words. Yes, ma'am. God expects us to be examples of life and to follow the Lord. Okay. We're supposed to fear him and holy. Well, I'm sorry. We're supposed to fear him as, as you know, uh, even his name is losing all that. Um, Where does the power in, in what Paul says?
said, <coughs> sorry, there's power in the tongue or power in words. Where does that come from? Where does that power come from? Now, I want you to over here. Brother Gavin, you had your hand up. Yeah, it's disrespectful. It is disrespectful. Okay. Where does that come from, that power? Okay. But where does that come from? Yeah, there you go. Matthew 12 and 34 says, A generation of vipers, how can you be evil? Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? So, when you say it's just a slip of the tongue, or, oh, I messed up, what's the danger there? The danger is where? It's in here, right? And it's a part of your makeup. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know some of y'all have been in the military, and I know for years and years and years, that's the way you talk to one another, you know? Uh, I know everybody used to talk about sailors and stuff like that, but I'm dead. Uh, I was around some drill sergeants, dude. <laughs> If, if they were any better than that, they were talking in a language you couldn't even understand. You know what I'm saying? So the idea is, is that, guess what? It's in the heart. And that's where the problem comes in. Because here's the deal. When you can talk like that and it not bother you, what is it saying about your heart? It's hard. It's hard. It's exactly right. And, and the problem with that is, guess what? The more we harden our heart, what happens? The more it gets harder. And as it gets harder, guess what? We have no tendency then to listen to who? To God, to the Holy Spirit, or any of that. All right? Listen to this. I, I, oh, wait a minute. It's the next verse, I think. Yes, it's the next verse. This sin of profanity leads to other sins. Listen to this. This is in Romans chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. It says, their throat is an open sepulcher. All right? What does that mean? Anybody know? It's a tomb. What's inside a tomb in their time and day? Because they didn't bomb nothing. Rot, decay, is that not right? That's what he's saying within their mouth. With their tongues they have used to see. The poison of ass is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their what? Now, think about this for a minute, because what he says is this, okay? We had some overly bright politicians that have decided that uh, we ought to make some places where marijuana use ain't that bad. Well, you know, you may believe that marijuana use ain't that bad, and that's, I, I'm not going to sit here and argue that for you. But the problem is this, with any drug, what happens, or drug abuse, should I say, that's not the only crime that's taking place. Other things are taking place that are drawn to it. Why? Because I got to get my next fix, and what do I got to do? If I ain't got a job, because you can't hold a job, because you can't stand up, what do you have to do? You have to steal. Is that not right? You know, how many times have we read in the paper or heard on the news, oh, well, this was a drug deal going bad? Yep. Then now murder is involved. Do you see what it says? Swift to, to shed blood. You know, running to destruction. Is that right? This is what happens. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and I don't know whether you smoke or not, I, 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 and I really don't care whether you smoke or not, but here's the deal. I have never met somebody who abuses drugs or alcohol that does not smoke. Now think about that for a minute now. Smoking used to be socially acceptable, but almost without exception, guess what happened? Somebody goes through a rehab, they keep smoking. What are they doing? They're substituting. That's exactly what they're doing. The addiction is still there. You know what I'm saying? And I can tell you that because I was addicted to tobacco. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. So the idea is, is that guess what? What we say won't hurt you. Well, he just said it tough word. Oh, little Junior's so funny. He just, he's just repeating Grandpa Paul. Yeah, when he's got his gun in the back of some guy at the 7-Eleven store killing him over a pack of cigarettes, you won't think that's so funny. You know what I'm saying? So the idea is, is that this, this is pretty serious. And it's pretty serious in our society. 
And unfortunately, just like these shootings that we've been seeing, it, it's, it's going to continue to increase. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not blaming that on that, but anyway. I want you to look at something here. This was George Washington. He wrote this in 1776. He says, The general is sorry to be informed that the foolish and wicked practice of profane swearing, a vice hitherto little known in the American <coughs> army, is growing into fashion. He hopes the officers will, by example as well as influence, endeavor to check it, and that both they and the men will reflect will reflect that we can have little hope of the blessings of heaven on our arms if we insult it by impiety and profanity. What was he saying? He said, you know what? We're asking God to bless us and our mouth is a, you know, we got a potty mouth. You know what I'm saying? He said, if we want God to bless us, we need to treat him with respect and we need to treat his name with respect. Now think about this way. There are some benefits to obedience to this command. First one is salvation. Listen to this. This is John 1 and 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his what? Name. The name is important because what does it do? It describes who God is. I am that I am. Okay? At the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord. Is that not right? He said here, in, in Romans it says what? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That name is so important that I will tell you, and I'm not a prophet, that prayer will eventually come back into the schools. It will be a corporate prayer. It will be something written by the school system. And when it does, it will talk all about God, but it will never mention Jesus. Okay. And the reason being is because the name Jesus is the only name whereby we must be saved. You see what I'm saying? That's how important that name is. Not only that, there's safety. Listen to this, Proverbs 18 and 10. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous run into it, and it is safe. It also helps us to speak words of encouragement. The Lord, in Isaiah 50 and 4, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learning that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Amen. You ever thought about that? How many people that we come in contact with that we have an opportunity just to encourage? That are going through a difficult time. You know what I'm saying? And he says, guess what? Those words are important. And I'll tell you something else. A word is like a bullet. Once a bullet travels down the barrel of that gun, guess what? There ain't no calling it back. It's going to do whatever it done. That word is the exact same way. You can be bitter to one another. You can bite at one another. But Paul said, don't be surprised when you're devoured. Because we need to be careful how we speak. All right? Yes, my brother. There's one, there's one term out there that that gets used so much in this day and time that I, people that wouldn't think of using God's name in vain with a cuss word. Well, they'll see, and, and it's so popular that they even got initials, O-M-G. Yeah. Oh my, and then have God's name. Well, I said so. sometimes elderly people that wouldn't think of you know, cursing, and not just young people. We'll use that term. Well, and, and they're using God's name in vain. If you look at verse 7, it says, do what? Not take his name what? Yeah. It, it's not just talking about profanity. How many of y'all ever smacked your face? Jesus! That's taking his name in vain. That's lessening, that's pulling him down from his throne to be <laughs> something common and base. And hey, I'm guilty of it. It's using this slang, not in a spiritual way. That's exactly right. And we need to be careful of what we do. Yes, Mr. Pidgey. I think any time any of us who've taken the name of Christian, Say that again now. Because it is the way we live, isn't it? You know, it is, you know, I, I heard a preacher say one time, and I thought it was so true. 
He said, you know, no matter where you go, if you're his child, he's inside of you. And if he is inside of you, guess what? Everywhere you go, you go to the bar, go to the place where you shouldn't be, telling lies, you know, the funny jokes that are filthy. At the, he's right there with you. He can't leave you. You know what I'm saying? Because he said, I'll never leave you no for something. So, you know, that's that's a thought. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's just, it's the casualness of the way we use his name. When in reality, his name is what gives us salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. You know, it's specific to him. All right, let's go a question on here to verse 8. All right? Look at this. Oh, we're going to break some hearts now. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. <coughs> Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Uh -oh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath. And the Lord thy God is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou shalt nor thy, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within the gates, in thy gates. For in the six for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in it. In them is, I'm sorry, uh, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Okay? Alright? Who does this command apply to? Right. Right. Does it apply to Israel? Alright. What about believers? Alright. What about unbelievers? Yeah. Why is it them too? Well then let me ask you a question. Why is it that we don't worship on Saturday? People did. But why don't we? If it says keep the Sabbath day holy, why don't we worship on Saturday? Our Sabbath is different than the Well, that's what the Jews recognize as the Sabbath. He said it comes on the first day of the Okay, rose on the first day of the week, that's correct. I want you to notice something here, because what you need to understand here is, he is giving us three essentials to human life. All right? All human life revolves around these three things. Work, oh my goodness, shock. Okay? Rest, because if you never rest, what will happen? The body, that's right, the body will eventually just break down. And the one thing that's that's overlooked, because most of us like our rest part, is what? Worship. Is exactly right. Is worshiping. And I don't care whether you're in the Old Testament, whether you're in the New Testament, I don't care how you define Sabbath, this verse applies to us all. Hebrews 10, 23 to 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and do good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, there are some reasons for worship. Does anybody see those in there? There are some reasons for worship. We hold fast to our faith. Okay, all right. All right, don't do not be wavering. Is that not right? So we need to worship because what happens if we don't worship? Now, let me, let me give you an example from somebody who can tell you from experience. All right? Slip away from the church and find out how quickly your spiritual life will nose die. Amen, brother. I did. And I've been there too, brother. I, I mean, it will nose die before you turn around good. I give you one step further. It, you can be affected in how you worship and live by the music you listen to, mm -hmm. by, the, by the, uh, the TV that you watch. You see what I'm saying? Would it not make sense that when we're together in church that we are doing what? 
He said it in verse 25. Provoking what? Now, when we think about provoking, we think about what? We think about negative, don't we? Ah, he's poking at me. No. He says that, guess what? We're to be a motivator. That's what he's saying. An encourager to other people to do what? To love and do good works. Now think about that for a minute. To love and do good works comes out of a worship service. Why is that? And I'm glad this came up. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you told me to announce this, darling, and I did. Wednesday night, they're going to put the baskets together. If your name is on that list, or if you have a neighbor that's on that list, <coughs> or whatever, if you will, Miss Carl and them will be over there Wednesday, you can pick your baskets up Wednesday. If not, they're going to deliver them Saturday. Okay? But if you'd like to pick them up, you can certainly pick them up next Wednesday. That's when they're going to put them together. Right? But, but the idea is, is that guess what? When we meet together, what should we be doing? Encouraging one another to what? First love one another, and then what? Do the right thing. It's exactly right. That's why these testimony services are so important. Because guess what? We need to hear what God is doing in your life because that provokes me. Because when I say, man, I'll tell you what, if those guys can do it, I don't know why in the world I can't do it. Well, I don't feel good. Well, you know, they don't feel good either. But you know what? They can do it. I, I can be right there with them. You know what I'm saying? So this idea of worship, it reaches into every part of our life. Amen. And that's what most people don't understand. But he says this in that last part of that verse, verse 25. He says, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as the manner of some is. What is he talking about? Church. All right, he's talking about going to church. He's talking about an assembly. And we're talking about worship. We're, we're talking about the Sabbath day too. All right, so he says what? There are some people who are going to do what? Now let me ask you this. How many of y'all have heard somebody say, oh, I'm a Christian. Now, I, I hear it down here all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Okay, where do you go to church? Well, I don't get in church. Think that person's wavering? Think their faith is wavering? I think it is. Because here's the deal. How can you love the head, who is Jesus, and not love the body? Have you ever thought about that? How can you not? <clears throat> I love to be with y'all. I love to talk to y'all. I love to see you at Walmart. And just, you know what I'm saying? Even though most of y'all are running and hiding, I still love to see you. I love to talk to you. You know why? Because you're God's people. And you know what? I know that no matter what I'm going through, I can talk to you. And when I leave there, I'm going to be encouraged. No matter what you're going through, I'm going to be encouraged. Because you're God's people. And he says, don't forsake that assembly. Don't forsake that time that you come together. Now, I want you to notice something about this. He says, not only not to forsake it, but he gives us a time frame. He says that, guess what? So much the more as you see the day approaching. What's he talking about? The, the rapture. When you, so much as you see God getting ready to come, what should we be doing? Less church or more church? <clears throat> but today, what do we do? Less church or more church? Because heaven help you if you, you schedule something other than the Chuck Wagon Gang Singers or something on Friday night. Because, man, you just done killed everybody. You know what I'm saying? But I can't believe you had that on Friday night. You know, that, that, that preacher down there has got us down to three or four times a week. I don't know what's going on. Well, you know, time I asked him, I said, you think the Lord's close to coming? Yeah, man, he's going to be here. Put the Easter sky in here. Uh, go to church more? No. Church what? Go where? Somebody's lying. And I'm going to hear that somebody. I know it ain't God. Because the Bible says it's impossible for him to lie. So somebody's telling you a lie when you talk about how much you love Jesus, but yet you can't never find him at the, the church house. I mean, that, that's, to me, it's, it's pretty simple. Yes, Brother Wayne. Gosh, I think I can fit this in right here. You know, we're talking about keeping the Sabbath holy, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of us, you know, we don't believe that we should work on Sunday. And, mm -hmm. and 
I'm one of them, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm a guilty person, so I'm going to go ahead and say this. Um, we're quick to get out of church on Sundays and go right down and support the ones that have to work while they're cooking at the buffets for us. Yeah. You know, church, uh, families used to get out of church, and they'd go home and they'd eat. Uh, if we watch the parking lot, and we're guilty of it, I'm guilty of it, you'll see some of us all piling up in a motor pool to head down to the buffet right quick. And them poor people have been there while we're at church. We're supporting what they're doing. But then we'll talk about Chick-fil-A, how great they are, because they're not open on Sunday, you know. Um, uh, my dad, one time I heard him tell my grandfather, my grandfather was Pentecostal, he told he was working, and my grandfather got on him, and my dad said, well, the ox is in the ditch, and my grandfather said, get you another ox. <laughs> but uh, that's, just, that's just how easy we can fall into it. It's convenience. It's convenience for us. Absolutely. And we get lulled into a sense of complacency. That's right. So, so let me ask you this. Is the Sabbath Saturday? Really? The Jews worship on Saturday. When Jesus was crucified, he arose the day after the Sabbath. Right? So is the Sabbath Saturday? Yes. Yes. Okay, someone say yes. Have any knows? <coughs> Bill said no. You don't think it's good. I have always wondered that. What is traditionally we recognize it as when? Now, you remember in, in verses nine and ten, he said God worked for six days, and on the seventh day he did what? Rest. So traditionally. We know Saturday is what? The seventh day. Is that all right? Okay. Because that's why you keep you keep saying in your mind, yes, it is Saturday. Okay? I want to define for you uh, the word Sabbath. Uh, and it's Shabbat. It means to rest, to repose, to cease. It means to cease from work and rest from work. Okay? Now think about this for a minute now. Why is this important to God? He gave us his very example of where he created everything. Is that not right? Why is it important to God? So, you want to worship God. Okay, okay. So we talked about rest. And we didn't talk about worship. Anybody else? Okay, because he did. Right. If he is the creator, and he is, that means he did what? He designed us. Is that all right? Now, if you talk to an engineer, if you talk to a uh, network specialist, you talk to somebody that does mainframes and things like that, you know, they can tell you exactly whatever the design can do. And so when we begin to draw too much bandwidth off of the system, what happens? It starts shutting down. It, why? Because it wasn't designed to do all of that. I'll give you an example. Miss Ridge is looking at me back there. She said, you talk about my language. I remember when we, uh, years ago in the county, when they first got uh, uh, internet into everybody's thing, we couldn't listen to the radio. You remember that? You couldn't listen to music on there because it, it took up too much bandwidth. When you talk about 600 people, you know what I'm saying? And everybody's bebopping and boobopping, and guess what would happen? What enough bandwidth to do anything else, the real work part of it. So they said, you can't do that. So what I'm trying to tell you is God said, I designed you, I made you, and you can't work seven days a week. Sooner or later, it will crush you. Okay? Now, think about this. What happens on the seventh day? Some of you guys have done it. I've done it. I've worked two jobs seven days a week. All right? What happens to your efficiency? When you get tired, what happens? And here's the deal. Let me go one step further. Are you more prone to mistakes? Well, you know, when you have to be doing somebody's breaks, guess what you don't want to do? Make a mistake is exactly right. So the idea is, is that guess what? God said it. This is important because this is my design for you. 1 Corinthians 16 says, on the first day of the week, 
Let every one of you lay in store by him as God hath prospered him. That there be no gatherings, what? He said, you know what? You need to do it in advance. Now here he's talking about offerings. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about you. I don't know when you get paid. But the very first thing that I do with my paycheck is whatever, whatever my tithe is, it goes in an envelope. You know why that is? Because if it goes in this wallet, guess what's going to happen? Something is going to find some way or another to just tear that thing all to pieces. Am I, not, am I right or wrong? Okay? So he said, you know what? We need to prepare or be prepared. Now, this was on the first day of the week. Remember what I told you? The Sabbath isn't Saturday. It simply means to cease from work. Okay? Well, how did we talk about this Saturday? Listen to this. Take your Bible. Okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Genesis. I done got y'all lazy. <coughs> Genesis chapter 2. If you go to page 1, you'll be real close. Okay. Genesis chapter 2. Because I want you to read along with me on this. Uh, because it, it don't jump out at you at first until you read it. Now, we just read in Exodus that God worked seven days and rested on the Sabbath. And that we are to keep the Sabbath holy. Is that not right? Look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Is that basically what he's saying in Exodus? Basically what he's saying next is, well then, what don't you see here? Alright? You see seven days, what? In a week. Is that not right? Mm -hmm. What don't you see in them seven days? Sabbath. There's no Monday. There's no Tuesday. There's no Wednesday. Why do the Jews worship on Saturday? Because that is the day they chose to honor the Sabbath. Now, does this start making any sense? Because guess what else we find out about this? There are six days to do what? Work. Is that not right? And there's one day to do what? To rest. For rest and worship. Okay? That's what, because that's exactly right. In the New Testament, because it coincides with Christ's resurrection. So that every Sunday should be celebrating Resurrection Sunday. Every Sunday. Because guess what? That's when we meet together. We're celebrating Christ rising from the grave. Which is the reason that we have eternal life. Make any sense? Alright. Verse 8 says, keep the Sabbath what? Anybody know what holy means? Because now, see, Brother Wayne's going to say, we can't even get our ox out of the ditch. <laughs> what is holy now? I like this. I took this out of a theological workbook on the New Testament by Harrison and Archer and Watkel, I guess. Holy says is, is quadus. All right? It means sanctified, separated, set apart, devoted, dedicated, consecrated, hallowed, honored, to make sacred. Now we know God's name is Hallowed, don't we? Because remember when Paul or when Jesus called the disciples out front, what he said, Father in heaven, who Hallowed be thy name. Okay? So we know that it's separate. We know that it's holy. Alright? But the Sabbath is also supposed to be holy. Alright, what about this? It means to be pure, clean. And free from all pollution and defilement. Totally free from sin and evil. What is he saying? On the worship day, where should we be? Alright? After church, where should we be? In front of the TV watching the football game, right? And I'm not trying to tell you that's evil. Now, let's see. Who was it? Wayne said it's evil. <laughs> 
you're watching the NFL. If you're watching Alabama beat somebody, you can watch all the NFL. Okay? But the idea is, is that yes, yes, ma'am, go ahead, Carl.
But we're going to come back to this. Don't, don't forget this slide. I, I may even reset it uh, and come back to it. But the idea is, is that guess what? Watch your mouth. You know what James said about your mouth? It'll start a forest fire. You know what I'm saying? Don't use the Lord's name in vain. Even like Ernie was saying, even just in the slang of the day, you know what I'm saying? Because that name has salvation. No, that's it. And, and you know, that was the last part of what he said, too. He said he wasn't going to put up with it. He would avenge it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not. All right? Yes, what's up? <laughs> And, and see, and that's why, in my opinion, that's why the Sabbath isn't, it, it isn't a day. Because you remember what he said, six days you work, seven days you rested. Is that not right? Because there are some companies, that, you know what I'm saying? They just, you know, the nuclear plant, they, they don't shut that down on Sundays. You know what I'm saying? Probably would like to, but they don't. Because it takes so long to start it all over again. What? That's their day. Whatever day they can get to a worship service. Now, I've had people tell me, I work seven days a week. Now, you know better than that. If that was the case, you'd be driving a Cadillac instead of you go. You know what I'm saying? I work seven days a week. No, that's an excuse for you not to be in church. But I'm going to tell you what, we have midweek services. I know folks that, that have come to church here and come to Sunday school, but could not stay for church. They had to go to work somewhere, but they were here for Sunday school. Because here's the deal. That fellowship, that rest, that worship feeds your soul. And if you want to walk with it, guess what? You better feed it. Alright? So did that answer your question? What's under that confusion? Alright? Alright. Is there anything else? Don't forget, next Wednesday, if you know somebody that's going to have one of these baskets, there'll be a symbol that can pick them up in the fellowship hall next Wednesday after church. Is that correct? Anything else need to be said or done? Don't forget Miss Marianne's uh, memorial tomorrow at 11 uh, over at uh, Grove. I never could figure out their name. Is it Grove First Baptist? First Baptist of Grove? I think they changed it. Is it Grove Baptist? I thought it was Grove Baptist. Is it? I thought it was First Baptist or something. Are oh, they did? They're the only Baptist or something. I don't know what to do. Anyway. Anyway, it's over there at 11. And, and viewing will be from 10 to 11. Okay? So we encourage you to come out and be a part of that. That having been said, I, I'm going to ask Brother Wayne over there, if you don't mind, if he close our services in a word of prayer uh, and ask God's blessing on us.